A leading charity warns vulnerable people could die if police stop responding to mental health emergencies. The Met Police says it's making the change as officers need to focus on crime. But tonight, there's alarm over who will provide urgent care. Also tonight, former This Morning presenter Philip Schofield hits back at critics, denying a toxic culture at the show. And thousands pack the streets to celebrate Luton Town's promotion to the top division for the first time in 30 years. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelow. Good evening. A leading mental health charity has warned people could die after the Metropolitan Police announced it will stop attending emergency mental health incidents unless there's an immediate threat to life. The force says it wants to free up officers to spend more time tackling crime, but there are warnings it could leave a gap in support. Sam Holder reports. Who is responsible for responding to a mental health emergency? Not the police, according to the country's biggest force. From September, the Met will no longer respond to 999 calls about mental health unless there is a threat to life. The UK's biggest mental health charity is warning there isn't enough time to bring in such radical changes safely. My worst fears are that people will uh, lose their lives. Uh, I think that people who are in mental health crisis are often experiencing suicidal thoughts, are often in the middle of uh, active self-harm. And so it does demand police paramedic intervention uh, urgently. The Metropolitan Police deal with five to 600 incidents where someone ends up being sectioned under the Mental Health Act every month. For each, officers spend on average 10 hours. Across all police forces, it's almost a million hours a year. The Met believe the health service should be responsible for dealing with mental health emergencies and that police officers should instead focus on tackling crime. And they're not the first force to make that argument. Humberside saved more than 1,000 police hours a month after they made a similar announcement. The difference is that was brought in over the course of more than two years and in conjunction with local hospitals, ambulance services, councils and charities. Former Met Superintendent Leroy Logan says the police must work with other authorities and be part of the solution. To pull out now, I think... Uh, it is uh, a dereliction of duty because we know there's a mental health case, especially since COVID, and we need to have a response. I think that's extreme, it's unnecessary, and it's causing a lot of anxiety. There is broad consensus that frontline officers face too much of the mental health burden, but with already stretched health services, who will fill their shoes in just three months' time? Sam Holder, ITV News. Italian firefighters have confirmed four people have died after a tourist boat capsized in northern Italy. Divers searched overnight after a violent storm overturned the boat, carrying more than 20 tourists and crew. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has called a snap general election for July after his Socialist Party suffered a resounding defeat in the local and regional elections. And celebrities have joined campaigners to highlight sewage pollution at Lake Windermere. Comedians Steve Coogan and Lee Mack are backing calls to end all sewage discharges into England's largest lake. Philip Schofield has denied claims of a toxic culture at This Morning. ITV's flagship daytime show returned today following a weekend of speculation over its future after the presenter quit the broadcaster on Friday. The host today said they love making the programme, but even while the show was on air, further concerns were being shared online, as Ellie Pitts now reports. Well, hello. Morning. How was your weekend? As this morning returned, it was business as usual, until a turn to the newspapers meant the presenters could no longer avoid addressing the row taking place off air about what it's like to work on the show. From both of us and the whole team here, the crew, the guys downstairs, uh, we love making this show for all of you. Yeah, we really do. This is a happy place to work. I enjoy coming in here. Before today's programme had begun, ex-host Philip Schofield posted online, this morning is the best show to work on with the best people. In all the years I worked there, there was no toxicity. 
Two hours later, Eamon Holmes, who had shared the sofa with Philip when he announced he was gay, called Schofield's statement delusional. Over the weekend, another former presenter, Dr. Range, revealed he'd gone to ITV bosses with concerns over the toxic culture at this morning. He worked on the show for 10 years, but says he was dropped after speaking out. In response to Dr. Range's comments, ITV said that after he made his complaint, they carried out an independent and external review, which found no evidence of bullying or discrimination. But personal brand expert Jennifer warns of the damage this very public spat between the former presenters could cause. A lot of what will be believed will be based on the credibility behind each person. And so normally you would say, you know, Philip Schofield's credibility, very high, people are going to believe him. But as I say, he's thrown a curveball at that credibility and that is knocked. So I think everything is really up in the air at the moment and people are just not knowing as audience. We, are, we just don't know who to believe. Bye. Bye. Philip Schofield left ITV last week after admitting he lied about an affair with a much younger male colleague. Despite his departure, the debate about the culture during his time at This Morning continues. Ellie Pitt, ITV News. To sport and Sheffield Wednesday have won the League One playoff final against Barnsley. Despite having a man sent off, Barnsley survived until the dying seconds of extra time when Wednesday scored a dramatic winning goal through Josh Windus, whose watching father, Dean, also once scored a playoff final winner for Hull City. Victory means Wednesday are promoted back to the Championship two years after being relegated. Meanwhile, for Luton Town, it was 30 years in the making and they've certainly celebrated in style. The people of the town packed the streets today as their football team returned heroes. They won promotion to the Premier League after beating Coventry City on Saturday. As Joe Caution found out, it was a party worth waiting for. Some wanted the best vantage point of their hat as heroes. And who could blame them? They'd been waiting a while to see Luton back in the top flight. This one's even better, a sea of orange flooding the town centre to welcome their team home from Wembley. But supporters were made to wait a little while longer. This is why. Um, how hard have you been partying since Saturday, Pelly? Oh, I was even late for the coach today, so... Um... <laughs> but it was worth the wait. To watch the playoff trophy being lifted in the town St George's Square after winning the richest game in football. It's the pinnacle of my career, really. You know, it's, um, I've done, I've achieved the target I've always wanted to achieve. Now it's time to, it's time to kick on. It's always Luton's always down in the dumps, and everybody's running it down. We've got an airport. We've got a fo Premier League football team. What else do the town need? Eh? This town represents everything I stand for. The yeah. culture, how you know everyone is together. On, and just see Luton in the Premier League. It's a big thing. We've been working hard for it, so it means a lot to all of us here, as you can see. We know it's going to be a massive challenge, but we've got to enjoy this moment now. You've got to want to bottle it up, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to try and keep this feeling forever. We've not wanted this season to end, to be honest. Uh, and we've got to enjoy these times because they're few and far between in football. Preparations for the Premier League will need to start at some point, but a bit like Saturday's match, Luton's party needs extra time. Joe Coshin, ITV News. And finally for this evening, it's that time of year again when hundreds of people decide to chase down a very steep hill after a rolling cheese. Take a look at this. The competitors hurled themselves after the double Gloucester, weighing half a stone, down Cooper's Hill in Brockworth near Gloucester. Now, despite many safety fears, locals say the daredevil event puts their village on the map rather than the me. And uh, that's it for now. I'll be back, though, with the late news. That's just after 10. Until then, whatever you're doing, enjoy your evening. Bye for now. Today, we'll see warmer temperatures moving in from the east especially around tea time. Heinz Beans sponsors ITV National Weather. A very good evening to you after sunny skies for many of us through this long late May bank holiday weekend. A similar theme 
as we slide into the new working week and into a new month. Fine, with plenty of sunshine in the next few days, but a little cooler where we keep a chilly, brisk breeze. And the same goes where we see a little more cloud cover, but a huge area of chunky high pressure, not going anywhere in a hurry, keeping it settled fine and dry. Not always sunny, a little more cloud further east with that brisk and at times chilly breeze from the near North Sea. Further west, a little more sunshine, slightly better temperatures, and we keep those chillier nights for the time being as well. As for the next few hours, late and low sunshine before dusk, temperatures soon slide away, like recent evenings and nights, turning quite chilly out in the countryside come dawn. A touch of Mr Merck developing across northern Scotland and Northern Ireland with barely a breeze here. Further south, a little more cloud across those central and eastern zones. For the rest of us, a clear, crisp start to Tuesday morning. Brilliant blue skies and some lovely sunshine from the word go. We've just got a little more cloud wafting across those central and eastern zones into much of Tuesday. And with the cloud cover, temperatures just a touch lower, a cooler, fresher feel generally, together with that chilly, brisk, and at times blustery wind from the near North Sea. So temperatures just a touch lower around those eastern coastal counties elsewhere. Well, west is best as far as that springtime sunshine is concerned and temperatures responding very well. A warm feeling, 23 or 24 degrees possible, particularly across Western Scotland. And a very similar setup as we go into the middle of the week too. See you soon. Heinz Beans sponsors ITV National Weather.